How was your trip? Oh my gosh. It was amazing. We loved it so much. We did so much walking. I was just like, maybe this is a bad idea when I only have like eight weeks of pregnancy left. Yeah. Um, I love Portland a lot. Portland, Maine. It was beautiful. Like all the water and stuff. And Woodstock, Vermont is beautiful. Help the cat. She's trying to talk to you. <laughs> She's so cute. She said hello. I uh, hope that little squeak came through. I hope <laughs> people get to hear it. It's cute. <laughs> that was really cute. But Woodstock, Vermont is gorgeous. We were a little disappointed. You know how like I've talked about Stowe and how I really want to go there Mm because all the things we've seen on Pinterest and stuff. It's just a couple of scenes and a couple of like covered bridges. But other than that, it's just, I don't know. It was just like a Gatlinburg kind of. Yeah. I was a little disappointed, but I mean, you can't always believe what you see in pictures, obviously. What? That's not true. Huh? People <laughs> edit things? You got catfished uh, by a place. <laughs> oh, by a place. <laughs> this is the Witch's Magic Murder and Mystery Podcast. Oh, oh right. By not a cat podcast and not a travel podcast. Yes. And also, we just haven't got to see each other forever. So. Oh, my God. Because we, <laughs> we recorded remotely even last time. We recorded. We did. So it's I know. Been a long time. Rough. I, guys, I would be with Megan today, but I am freaking exhausted. Mm-hmm. Traveling back home just wrecked me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but we did <laughs> our flight back home from New York. We were sitting, I think we had like road 21 or whatever. If we were just sitting back there and all of a sudden, like the flight attendant comes back and she's like, hey guys, like due to weight distribution, we really need three people to move up. Um, I'm not sure what the seats look like, but it's towards the front. But uh-huh. I didn't want to be like, well, because there were four of us. So I didn't want to be like, oh, I'm going to leave somebody. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, I really want to stretch my legs out because flying for like almost two hours is exhausting, mm-hmm. especially when you're pregnant. So I just looked at the girls and I was like, are you all okay if the three of us move up towards the front? And they were like, yeah, that's fine. We get up there. It's first class. Oh, the nice. Getting, like the woman was so nice to the girls. She's giving them all the snacks and like all the things. And they were like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> I've never been first class in my life. It sounds very fun. It was fun. But here we are. I'm glad you're home. We're doing it. Yep. Yes. And we have an episode today. Yes, we do. So I chose Sybil Luddington. I think I've talked about her in the past. A lot of people say that even though she was real, she didn't do this. And a lot of people say that she did do this. Okay. So this was 1761. Um, So back then, women didn't really get the recognition they deserved when they were heroes. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why there's not a ton of back. (laughs) Really, yeah. Today. (laughs) Totally different. But I don't know. Maybe that's why she, you know, didn't get the recognition she deserved. But it is what it is, and we're going to give it to her. Okay. Sybil Luddington also spelled 5,000 different ways in so many articles. She was born April 5th, 1761. She was the first of 12 kids. Oh, my. Her parents were Henry and Abigail, and they were from a town in New York called Fredericksburg. Her dad had been in the military. He was a British military soldier, but then at the time of the American Revolution, he switched sides to the Patriot cause. To the revolution. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so her dad was a colonel. Oh my God, the cat now has the, has the zoomies. She's running around me. They they just were in cahoots with, you know, all the cool people during the American Revolution, like Washington and Hamilton and mm-hmm. all those people. So just keep that in mind. So April 26, 1777. Sybil is 16, and it's, like, recently 16. A person arrived at their home, and they were like, we really need to speak with your dad. Danbury, Connecticut's been attacked, burned by the British militia, and they're coming to capture all the things. So we need your dad to gather all his guys up who are in town, which was about 400 but they were just kind of like scattered around the town because it was their off season. They weren't doing any training at the time. They got to be home with their families. Mm -hmm. 
he's like, I real this guy was like, I really need you to go gather up your men and you need to come, you know, fight with us. You all need to step up and let's go do this. So Sybil, in some of the articles, people are like, she took it upon herself to do this. And other articles, people were like, you know, her dad asked her to, and she was, you know, she was like the American Mulan. <laughs> she, just, <laughs> she was like my dad. The a man. River. that song. So good. So she was like, forget it. I've got this. I'm going to mm-hmm. do this. Mm-hmm. So she hops on her horse and some articles say it's her horse. Some more articles say it's her dad's horse. Either way, it's one of the family's horses mm-hmm. takes off into the middle of the night. And she goes to every house of all of her dad's soldiers knocks on their door with people in the articles, say a big stick, like banging on their doors. Like, this is what's happening. You all need to meet up. Let's go. Mm -hmm. She rode through the night alerting all of these guys. Oh, wow. Um, And it's dark. It's in the woods. All the articles said that it was raining. And it said she rode 40 miles, which was triple the length of Paul Revere's ride. And she, there's crazy people out there with (laughs) the military, like probably spying and doing all this stuff, like coming into the town and stuff. So this poor 16 year old girl is like fleeing through the town on her horse, trying to alert all these men and do all these good deeds. And she wasn't injured. Like she was totally fine. And a lot of people say the reason for this is because she'd been around her dad's men for forever. She knew where they lived. She knew their families. Mm -hmm. So she knew how to get, you know, through the back roads to their houses easily without being detected, which is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Some accounts say that the church bell was rung after she alarmed these men. And some of the guys were like, we're going to ride the rest of the ride with you. And she's like, nope, I've got this. You get to where you need to be. <laughs> yeah, I've got my stick she's, and my yeah, horse. I'm fine. I've, got, I've got all these things and I'm totally fine. So she did it. And even though they didn't get to the town in time, they still were able to stop a lot of things from happening. And they were able to confront the departing British and kind of push them back to Long Island. Oh, good. In a lot of these articles, George Washington is reported to have personally delivered his thanks to her. And also Alexander Hamilton wrote Colonel Ludington, I congratulate you on the Danbury expedition. The stores destroyed have been purchased at a pretty high price to the enemy. And General Rochambeau, the French commander fighting with the Americans, also congratulated her too. Oh, wow. I know. So that's that's, cr- that's yeah. kind of cool. Like, can you imagine her dad answering the door? And then, like, what if some of these people didn't even know it was her that alerted everybody? Yeah. And they were like, no, he's like, no, here's my daughter's the one that like saved your butts. Here you go. And she probably was like, uh, I'm a woman and it's the <laughs> 1700s. Please don't get mad at me. <laughs> so I'm curious about the whole thing where you said some people say that she didn't even do this, but I'm like, if there's correspondence from. Right. Okay. So that's where that it gets interesting. So she did a lot even after doing this. She married a man named Edmund Ogden when she was 23. So, I mean, when you're in the 1700s, that's a good time to, like, she just was like, I'm getting my life together. I mean, yeah, she's practically an old maid. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he had served as a sergeant in the Revolutionary War, and they lived in uh, Catskill, New York. And they had Henry Ogden, their son, and that was the only kid they had. But Edmund died in 1799 from yellow fever. Mm -hmm. And Sybil, instead of being like, oh, my gosh, we're going to have to live off the land. We're going to have to do all this stuff. She said, screw it. I'm going to purchase a tavern and I'm going to use the funds from my tavern to help Henry become a lawyer. Oh, wow. I know. So she did she did all of this she ran the tavern she was a super successful businesswoman and it says in one of the articles that 
there was competition from more than 20 male owned establishments in the area, she was still more successful than them. So in 1811, she moved with her son to Otsego County. I don't know where that is. Uh, you don't. <laughs> no. Hold on. I'm going to Google it. No. Zero. I don't need your help. I didn't click on this. Her cast name is Zero, you guys. It is. So Because we love numbers. <laughs> so we do. Oh, my God. That's exactly what her name is. <laughs> uh, oh, it's still in New York. Okay. She moved with her son. And he established a law practice there. And it was all because of her. She busted her butt as a single mom to make sure that he was able to finish law school. And she spent the next 20 years just hanging out with the grandkids. She died February 26, 1839 at 77 years. I feel like that's pretty old at that year. I agree. I agree. Mm Mm-hmm. They brought her body back to her hometown and buried her next to her dad in the Presbyterian Cemetery in Patterson. Oh, Henry, her son, was also elected to the New York State Assembly. Um, Oh, wow. Yeah, but he unfortunately passed away a year before his mom. Oh. But there's lots of Sybil's legacy that's around New York. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a bronze statue of her as a teenager. And it was created by Anne Hyatt Hunting Tone Hunt <laughs> Hunting Tonin. <laughs> it's H U N T I N G T O N I N Hunting mm-hmm. Tonin. And yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's her on top of her horse, and they said the horse's name was Star. And it said she in the statue, she's like got her mouth open, like she's screaming and waving the stick that she used. So I'm sure she was yelling something way cooler than the British are coming. Right. <laughs> it's like, I got this big stick energy. <laughs> exactly. That's going to be our next t shirt. Um, and that was unveiled June 3rd, 1961. There's lots of like kids books out that are all about her. There's several other books that tell her story. And there are several little markers along the way of like the way she probably would have taken and runners yeah. try to accomplish what she accomplished, but like on foot. But I just love that she was 16 and she just, she didn't stop to think. She just did the thing. No, you exactly. Know? She just was like, this is my family. It needs to be this done. is my town. We've got to do our duty. And here we go. Like we're going to do this. And like I said, like a lot of people were like, well, there's not a lot of information about this. So, you know, why would we believe it's true? But then several other like historians and, you know, professors and stuff were like, heck yeah, this is true. Like one dedicated tons of time of his life to researching her. And it said that he went all the way back to find Um, a letter written from his, I think it was her nephew or something like that to where he was just like, listen, I need you all to recognize this person in my family and the hero that they are. Mm -hmm. Because back then they didn't write about women in the newspaper. People, unfortunately, I mean, unless it was drama, didn't. And (laughs) I feel like that may still be the same. I was going to say, I don't know if that's... (laughs) all that different (laughs) of course now it's just all drama it doesn't necessarily have to be about women just drama all the drama we can find it's all they're going to talk about anywhere yeah exactly so it's just you know all the things and it's not like this person even said like writing the article they said that she didn't even request like money from the government for taking part in you know, this crazy experience that she had, she did um, try to get her husband's pension when he passed away because he Mm -hmm. was a sergeant in the military, Mm -hmm. but they wouldn't give it to her because they said that they had no record of their official marriage. So she didn't even get that. Uh, So she didn't have like that kind of money to go off of. She uh busted her butt and made her own, you Mm -hmm. know, legacy. And she made that legacy for her son who, you know, all of his kids and stuff went on to remember her and do all yeah. of these cool things. Oh, I love it. That's a great story. I like that we're talking about her all these years later. I know. Look at us. Here we are doing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, like I said, I'd never even heard of her. So that's great. I know. Well, I had honestly forever ago when I used to be 
madly obsessed with drunk history. <laughs> remember there being an episode about it, but mm-hmm. I don't remember what we were. T- I think one day on the podcast, we were talking about Paul Revere or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I've got to do simple. That story. sounds like us. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> when, when are we not talking about something random? <laughs> Never. Never. All right. Well, I'm happy you're home. Me too. And you guys, as you've noticed, we're recording this remotely. And Listen, things happen, guys. Yeah. Things it's also lot. like today's episode. We're recording it today and we're going to release it today. <laughs> so, you know, thanks for being patient with us. <laughs> Megan's amazing. <laughs> and we'll be back on Friday with another episode. Oh my gosh, we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We love you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye.